back everyone this is jacob shoot filling in for tom o'brien this of course is the tom o'brien show now every monday on the second segment we are joined by steve rhodes steve rhodes is the author of mastering probability of course he also hosts the traders edge at 11 a.m eastern time every day that the market is open now you look over here this is what we got going on. You go to the TFNN.com, you go to that newsletters tab, I'll take you through it. And then right here, the top right hand side, you have Mastering Probability Newsletter by Steve Rhodes. Now, one of the things I really like to do every Monday, this is one of the positives that I really have working uh, at TFNN, is that I get access to these premium newsletters just kind of whenever I want, right? And um, I love that. Because what I can say for Mastering Probability at least, and just looking through the one today, it's like the Admiral's Brief, right? You have so much going on every day in the market. You're trying to figure out where you wanna position yourself. Are you missing opportunities that you're just not seeing because you're getting concerned with other things? And that makes sense, we're only human, right? But even reading through Mastering Probability today, I mean, the it, it's talking about certain patterns that have been triggered, right? And some of the major indices, things that I would have missed, right? Um, had I not had access to Mastering Probability. And one of the things I wanna say is that if you're a first time subscriber to any of our newsletters of Mastering Probability in particular, we have a 30 day money back guarantee in case it doesn't work out for you for whatever reason, but we are betting it is going to. We are joined right now by Steve Rhodes. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, Jacob. How, uh, how was your weekend, Steve? I was. Uh, it's wonderful. I mean, this is a great time of the year for me. You got all the sports, right? We had a nice golf tournament, uh, the President's Cup, which uh, it was an inter interesting uh, golf championship. First day, the U.S. took all the points. Next day, the uh, international team took all the points. I thought it was an, a, a great tournament. And then all the great football. You know, Friday Absolutely. night, I was watching one of the college games. Or there were two college games on, two or three. And... It's amazing to me, Jacob, just how consistent and how far these field goal kickers are placing oh, yeah. these balls. So I'm watching one game, and I think it was a 58-yard field goal that they that the guy uh, kicked. It, he had 10 extra yards on it. It could have been 68 yards, which is kind of mind-boggling. And then I turned the next channel. I think this one went into overtime, yeah. uh, whatever that game was. And it was like a 56-yard field goal. It's, it's right. It's amazing just how far these field goal kickers are, are, are uh, you know, are, are, hit, are, are from where they're hitting the ball from. So for me, great weekend. Uh, obviously, yeah. a little bit easier for us because we were on the eastern side yeah. of the state, and really, you know, the we we basically just had your normal tropical storm wind, you know, kind of damage. Sure. As you mentioned, I've got a a, a good friend of my, a very good friend of mine, their niece. Lost their, they're in St. Petersburg. They're on the beach. They lost their house. This is the second time in a row. Yeah. Now that they've lost their, their, their home. So uh, you know our house. Yeah, I've been in, in Florida for 41 years. So I've been through 41 years worth of hurricanes. I prefer hurricanes because you can see them coming and you can prepare. Right. Uh, you know it doesn't always hit exactly where it's supposed to, but we have enough time to prepare for that or get out of dodge and so forth. So to that extent, it's helpful. But obviously, when you get these gigantic water surges out there, you know nothing stops water. Absolutely not. Yeah. No, our hearts go so, out to everyone affected by that for sure. So, and it's and it's amazing up in Nashville. You know, over the week I really didn't see much in the way of TV other than some sports stuff, and it's incredible what's happened up in uh, you know in the North Carolina area, absolutely, and and, and beyond. You know, I've got a a niece, and uh, they live in the Atlanta area in the Buckhead area, and they had a tree come crashing through their home, through their master uh, bedroom. So, and that's scary, scary. And you know, you've been up in Georgia, you got big trees up there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I saw even big trees down here. It was really, uh, and you know, I'm only 28, right? But this is definitely the most intense one that I've seen in my lifetime, um, at least in my, you know, as I was a person, right? I, I, I sure, couldn't, sure. Uh, I couldn't fathom anything worse than, than what this was. So, but yeah, yeah crazy yeah. events coming on. So, uh, Steve, Absolutely. you know, you we, know what, what, yeah. I thought what we'd do today, since today is the end of the month, yeah. is just kind of get a, a little bit of a big picture as to what we're looking at. Sure. So this chart here, and, and I appreciate the fact that you love the morning, uh, the Monday uh, newsletter, just to kind of get gathered with regard to at least, you know, what I'm looking at. And you're exactly right in that oh. there's a lot of moving parts that impact the markets out here. Um, but this year, right now, we've got the uh, eight different monthly uh, contract uh, eight different monthly charts for the cash indices out there. So you notice you got the Dow on the left hand side. The Dow itself 
We'll go ahead and negate uh, a TD9 count topping pattern today. What that means, this is a pattern that formed last month. And when you take out that that pattern in one single month, it tells you about a very strong upward momentum move. Now, unfortunately, we've got uh, we've got divergent messages out here because all the other indices actually have tops that are in place. So the S and P is going to go ahead and complete its TD nine count top. Now, what's really important is to be watching as we get into October. Here is this price trading above the high for September. Uh, and if it is, then there's an and then it's a good indication that maybe, in fact, that TD9 count top is going to fail as well. So the Nasdaq's got a TD9 count top that completes this week. The Russell 2000's got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top that's still in place. The semis have got a TD9 count top. So we've we've got uh, all each of the other monthly charts. Uh, Jacob have topping signals. So we got a divergence. My focus right now today is really on the Dow. And if we take a look at the Dow, the Dow negated its TD9 count top on a daily time frame last Friday. And it's got an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, it's got a price projection of 43.079. That does not mean that that's where the Dow will stop. Uh, on its uh, rally out there. The weekly time frame chart does not have any kind of a topping pattern. Now, if there were to be a bearish reversal candle that were to form by Friday, then it could generate, then it would generate a uh, Rhodes Mentum indicator top. The Dow Jones Monthly, is, as we mentioned, uh, is, is going to negate its T9 top. It has a one to one A to B equals CD price projection level of 47,399 out there. Now, the interesting thing about the monthly chart, I can show you another T9 count topping pattern that formed back here in uh, 2021, September of 2021. And we'll see that that pattern also failed immediately. And then the market rallied for 10 uh, months out there, 10 additional months before the actual top came in. That was a Rhodesman indicator top. What's really important about this is under is watching that green oscillator and change or an oscillator and change line out there. And that's one of the tools that I teach subscribers out there. And as long as price is above a green oscillator and change line, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. And those are bullish conditions. So if we have a top, that would just say that the signal overall is neutral. If price trades below it, closes below it, that's a whole different message out there. Uh, so last Friday, uh, it's also important, as you said, to take, you know, there's a lot of different factors. So we could be buyers in the U.S. of an instrument, but overseas, they might be sellers. So it's good to know how an instrument is trading in, in major currencies. And uh, last week, on Friday, the Dow made new all-time highs in terms of U.S. dollars, euros, Chinese yuan, and the uh, Canadian loonie out there. So not all of these currencies are we making new all-time highs. That's just suggest caution, but this is still an international rally. This is not just a rally that is U.S. based. Always important to understand, we're entering the most bullish seasonal cycle period for the Dow, which is the last quarter of the year. If you look at the very bottom right-hand side, you'll see October, November, December uh, should be higher closes out there. Here's the presidential cycle. The presidential cycle suggests that we uh, bottom uh, next week, October, October 9th. Maybe it's, yeah, so sometime, I think, late next week out there. And then we continue to move higher into year end. Uh, the uh, Dow's next horizontal trading range boundary line is up at 43,967. I see we're out of time here. So the Dow is sending signals to us, Jacob, that we should continue to move higher. It's the other U.S. indices that we've got to be paying attention to because there's no uniform message. Fantastic. Steve, thank you for coming on. I know it was a little bit short, but we always appreciate you having me on. And we'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. You bet. Take care, Jake. Have a great day. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This, of course, is the Tom O'Brien Show. Now, we were just joined uh, by Steve Rhodes last segment. Uh, usually, Tom has Steve and Basil on uh, for one full segment, uh, but we kind of had a shorter segment on the last one, and I wanted to bring Steve Rhodes back just for a little bit so we could go over all the stuff that he had planned for us. Again, uh, really kind of a thorough newsletter here, Mastering Probability. You come over here to the Newsletters tab, you go ahead and hit subscribe, all right? And we get some great deals here. 149 for one month, 695 for the six month, and 1195 for the year. That is a 33.17% discount uh, for the yearly subscription. And again, if it's your first time subscribing, you can do this risk-free. It is a 30-day money-back guarantee for whatever reason it doesn't work for you. But again, as I always say, I'm pretty sure that it will. Steve Rhodes, uh, happy to have you back on. 
<laughs> hey, thanks. I appreciate that, Jacob. So, of course. You know, we were, we're taking a look at this chart here, and this is the seasonal time frame chart for the Dow. If you look in the upper right-hand side, kind of mid-right-hand side, you'll see this covers 127 years worth of data. So pretty solid there. And this is showing us so all those years were put together trying to match up the first trading day of the year for each year out there. And this gives us kind of the average seasonal cycle. So what we do know is that September – is supposed is basically the worst on average the worst performing month of the Adal. But as we talked about, we're 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 not we're making new all time highs <laughs> right. in September. We're not uh, we're not uh, you know down any kind of lows or or anything along those lines. So I just wanted to at least point that out to folks out there. And you can see that this by the way this this red vertical line is is today. And so it shows that on average, typically, the Dow forms a bottom a couple of maybe like Thursday, Friday of last week. And, and we rally typically for the first week. And then we get a pull back into the end of October out there. And then it's a, a big move to the upside. So, you know, the question is, is this the pattern that the uh, Dow is forming? Because it certainly hasn't made lows out there. If we take a look at the presidential cycle and we look at September, it still is typically – a, a poor performing month, not as poor as a normal seasonal cycle out here. But in this instance, it shows that really the Dow would not form its bottom until uh, October the 9th. So I believe that is going to be right around the end of next week, if I'm not mistaken out there. So on a president, and you can see the, the, the check marks here. They'll show you all the years of the presidential cycle so everybody can get a gauge of, of where we're at here. So this is showing us that we could actually move lower into, let's say, next week. So what, what other things can we take a look at? Well, first, here is a set, here's the horizontal trading range boundary lines uh, for the monthly time frame for the Dow. Now, Jacob, what this tool does is it takes all of this data, and this data here I'm going back into, you know, 1995 or something like that. Um, and what it does, it looks for opens and closes of each month. And it identifies the largest number of opens and closes. Then it gives us the second largest number of opens and closes. And that's what creates those horizontal trading range. This is a tool that was perfected by Bud Rolfs many decades ago. Um, and, and it's a wonderful tool, especially when we're at all-time highs. Because the question is, where is resistance? Now, on a monthly basis, the Dow actually has an A to B equals CD pattern that would take us up towards 47,399. But this, uh, do you see this dash level out here? Yeah. That's kind of a midpoint in between these horizontal trading ranges. And those, those can act as resistance levels, net rising price channels in 43, 325 level. Now, any move to the downside, the number that folks should be watching would be 4291. Uh, that was old resistance. That should be new support on any kind of a pullback. Obviously, we have a pullback today. If we take a look, this is the uh, from a monthly basis. I want to first just focus on the very right-hand panel. And on a monthly basis, what we're going to have is five consecutive closes to the upside. Now, if we take a look at the prior three, and those are marked with these uh, blue uh, uh, squares around the number five out there. So the last time that we had one, we just simply had a one month move to the downside and then price moved higher. Uh, if we take a look at the time before that, going back into 2020, it was a two bar move to the downside. So the black digits are measuring consecutive moves higher, the red digits consecutive moves lower. What's really important, especially in bull markets, what people should, should know is typically uh, moves to the downside, uh, find bottoms within two to four bars out there. In fact, even the 2020 monthly low was a three bar move to the downside. <laughs> so it's really cool to watch these consecutive moves higher and lower in the marketplace. So that kind of takes us to today. Today is going to be a one bar to the downside. And if we take a look at since the rally going back into, geez, this is a daily time frame. So this goes back into the beginning of September. It looks like we've had just two two bar rallies to the downside. So what this is suggesting is that we could see a two to four bar pullback inside of the Dow on the daily time frame before things resume to the upside. I would venture to say tomorrow might be the more likely day uh, where we see some kind of bottom come in, uh, but we'll have a better feel for that uh, when we take a look at overnight action 
Dow equity future contracts and so forth. So bigger picture here, the Dow should resume higher. The question is, are we going to see a one month pullback, a two month pullback, or really just three or four days out there? I don't know the answer, but first what we'll do is we'll watch the daily time frame chart. We'll watch different profile levels on the equity future contract, and that will help us. You know, one of the tools that, that I know you love yeah. that's included in the uh, newsletter, even I also include this in the evening newsletter so that clients can do some of their own work. And I've identified, now this happens to be just the Dow's top 30 uh, stocks out here. So just sticking with the Dow. But as you know, I do the top 10 in the Dow, the top 10 in the NASDAQ, all the index ETFs, uh, all the sectors inside the S&P 500, and it provides all this information. So just as an example, people always, you know, during the day when I do my show from 11 to 12, people are typically asking, hey, I'd like to add to a position. I'd like to get into a position. So what you want to do is you want to buy support. And so if we just take a look at uh, uh, Apple out here, Apple has a TD9 count support. So one support level is 211.97. Profile support, 224.92. A support of the oscillator and change line at 227.36. So those would be three different areas that somebody would be looking at to explore and taking and adding to their position out there. Now, I also provide the average 10-day um, uh, true range out there. And so in the case of Apple, this tells us that over the last 10 days, its daily movement is $4.47. Now, down below, I won't go through this in detail. People can take a snapshot if it's on their screen. Sure. But this shows you how to use this data to create your own position size so you know ahead of time where the different support levels are at inside of whatever instrument. In this case here, we're talking about uh, Apple. And so lastly, here is the uh, Today's going to be, as we mentioned, today's going to be bar number one to the downside. This is the Dow Equity Future contract. The key level of support that people should watch is 41,883. So you may not have access to the futures, but I guarantee you when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll be able to see that. And so the key level to be watching, if anything happens to the downside, the key level of support here is 41,883 out there. So I expect us to see probably a two bar low that would come in uh, tomorrow. Fantastic. And yeah. Like I was saying, folks, tomorrow at 11 a.m., if you like what you're listening to here, one, check out the newsletter, and then Steve Rhodes has the Trader Edge at 11 a.m. Eastern time right here on TFNN. Steve, thank you so much for coming back on and sharing hey, that with us. Fantastic as always. You, you bet, Jacob. Thank you, and have a great day. Take care, Steve. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.